For over 132 years, the Coca-Cola company has been part of many people's lives. Coca-Cola now offers more than 500 brands in over 200 countries worldwide. The Coca-Cola company also employs over 700,000 people worldwide, creating economic opportunities in many local communities. The company has also taken the responsibility upon themselves to reduce the environmental impact by replenishing water and promoting recycling. Now you may ask yourself, what is the secret to the Coca-Cola brand success? Well, it's the people. The people who have collectively created and benefited from these various initiatives across the African continent. I'm Asanda Marku and in this series I'll be your guide through these various initiatives that are set up by the Coca-Cola company. So join me as I embark on the journey to find the secret formula. Everything started around um, 2009 um, when a delegation from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Global Fund approached um, our then CEO in Atlanta um, with, a, with a simple request um, to bring some innovative private sector thinking into um, the fight against TB, AIDS and malaria in particular. So the, the request was we pouring billions of dollars into making medicines available to various African countries, but we're still facing problems in making sure that they get to the point of need. Project Last Mile is a, is a true cross-sector partnership. So our partners include the Global Fund, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the United States Agency for International Development, or USAID, the Coca-Cola Company, and the Coca-Cola Foundation. The, the unique role actually of the Coca-Cola company is really a commitment to share best practices, processes, relationships, networks, basically intellectual property um, that drives its success in Africa with the other partners. Healthcare and access to medications has always been a challenge in Sub-Saharan Africa. Project Lost Smile is one of the solutions not only making strides in terms of reaching people who need to access healthcare, but also sharing how Coca-Cola's distribution works with governments to get medicines to far-flung clinics that are sometimes inaccessible due to lack of infrastructure and development. Their motto is, if you can find a Coca-Cola product almost anywhere in Africa, why not life-saving medicines? Now there's two sides to any initiative and in this episode we're going to explore those. There's the marketing side whereby you need to reach the general population as to how to take care of themselves and act preventatively and the physical delivery of life-saving medications. Bottom line is you need to first educate people how to take care of themselves. There's that old cliche, before we run we need to walk. So let's focus first on the marketing side and that's in the Kingdom of Eswatini, a short one hour flight from Johannesburg. Eswatini is bordered by Mozambique and South Africa. It is 200 kilometers north to south and 130 kilometers east to west, making it one of the smallest countries in Africa. Now, the climate is very diverse and I can testify to this because I've experienced all four seasons in one day. The Swazis established their kingdom in the mid 18th century under the leadership of Mwane III. The country and the Swazi take their names from Swatini II, the 19th century king under whose rule Swazi territory was expanded and unified. The present boundaries were drawn up in 1881. After the Second World War, the kingdom under the name of Swaziland was a British protectorate from 1903 until it regained its independence on the 6th of September 1968. In April 2018, the official name was changed from Kingdom of Swaziland to Kingdom of Eswatini. Okay, so we are in Eswatini, um, very beautiful, green, luscious uh, country. It's my first time here. So far, so good, um, except the fact that it took us an hour and a half drive, you know, from the airport to the hotel. Um, but I guess, you know, it's all about infrastructure and building. So, you know, um, that part has been very interesting because it's like we should have just driven from Joburg to Swaziland, basically. Um, but yeah, I, I see the work and so far it's very misty, so I can't say much. But it's starting to clear, hopefully. Um, and yeah, we'll get to explore more about Eswatini. We are sitting here at the beautiful Hilton Hotel Eswatini and I'm joined by the beautiful Kabonina Mabuza. Thank you so much for joining me. My role 
uh, in Project Last Mile is country coordinator for the project in the Kingdom of Eswatini. We started the project um, late 2016, um, but uh, we intensified on delivery of the program between 2017 and 2018. Now, the project itself, can you just take us through it, how it works and who do you work with? Basically, what um, Project Last Mile is saying is that the concepts that, we, that, that, Coca -Cola, that the Coca-Cola company uses, let us try and interpret them into the health space. The way that you relate to a Coke, you want that taste of a Coke. Yes. Relate to access to um, medication, access to clinic uh, health services in the same manner. The way that you would find um, a Coca-Cola in the most rural of areas, have medicines or medical services um, readily available in that kind of a manner as well. So basically what we are saying is the whole Coca-Cola company process of service delivery, where marketing is concerned, let us interpret it into the health space to say, how do you talk to uh, maybe that target uh, group? How do you uh, interpret concepts? How do you do your research such that they speak to the beneficiaries that you want to focus on on the delivery of the project? The first phase of the project started with focusing on the girl. We did uh, Zimet um, neurological uh, research. Um, it's a Coca-Cola uh, kind of like research that they've done previously as well, um, where basically you just get into the minds of the young girl. Now that we have the research and the research outcomes, let us go to a, a marketing agency, again, that is reputable within the Coca-Cola um, um, system. Um, to, to interpret those research outcomes into communication concepts that will speak to the young girl in Eswatini, mm -hmm. informed by the young girl in Eswatini, and targeting the young girl in Eswatini. In 2017, the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria invited Project Last Mile to support the Ministry of Health in Eswatini by leveraging the Coca-Cola company's marketing expertise to create demand for HIV prevention, specifically amongst young women and girls. This has become known as Project Girl Champ. There's an initiative specifically called Girl Champ. Yes. Can you take us through that and, and, and why is it so important? So basically what Girl Champ does is to say, let us empower the girl. Even though the crux of the matter for us is behavior change in terms of sexual and reproductive health, but we decided to look at the girl holistically. Holistically in the sense that you look at um, life skills, you look at health and fitness, and then you get into um, SRH. Because remember, uh, you don't want to scare the girl away. Yeah, You want an environment that will be um, enabling for the girl to open up, you know, and address their issues. So basically what we did was we took uh, the concept into the communities. Um, we invited um, young girls in our age group, 14 to 24, through their schools, through their community influencers, to say, come into the clinic. Um, the clinics that we started off with was Mafuteni Clinic, Luyengo Clinic, and Zomboze Lamvelase Clinic, which you will get to see. From the research, what came out is that Girls, even though there are so many things that influence um, who the girl child is, but ultimately they want to see themselves as powerful women. Project Last Smile in Eswatini is all about creating demand for services, much like the demand for a soft drink. There are obviously still certain barriers that must be overcome, existing prejudices, lack of understanding and embarrassment. Okay, so we're on our way to St. Andrew's Primary School in Malkins. Um, we're going to go and chat to Zanelle Nzinisa, who is a career guidance teacher. And she's just going to tell us about the importance of educating children on their personal health and safety. Okay, so Kabonina, we just got to St. Andrew's School. Um, but before I go and speak to Zanelle, I just wanted you to give us, you know, um, the rundown or the whole process of how this initiative works, not just for the school. I mean, you could take us through St. Andrew's specifically, but just, you know, within the community itself. Every clinic in the kingdom of Eswatini 
has what you would ordinarily call a board, but in this case it's called a clinic committee okay. that they work with. The clinic committee consists of um, the key informants, the people that work closely with the chiefs, mm -hmm. the schools, mm -hmm. the churches, and all of those prominent people that are of influence within the community. So what the clinic committee then did was to select career guidance teachers from all the schools within their catchment area so that they come in they are, actually, they are educated on the Girl Champ concept as well as empowered as coaches. As a career guidance teacher, tell us how you, know, you educate these kids about their personal health issues and why you think it's so important and just what some of the challenges you, know, you faced. As a career guidance teacher with our timetable, we have scheduled time Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m where we collect all the children for a section. But yes, it helps because some of the parents take it hard to talk to their children. And, and are there any challenges you faced? You know, obviously there's shy children you face with kids that are not as open. How do you address that and, and solve that? We start as group discussions. That is when everyone opens up. Yeah. Because individually it is hard for on a one-on-one, -on -one it is hard to open up. So if there is this one learner with a very challenging situation, speaking out to the next learner also, will discuss the yes. Now, in terms of Project Last Mile, just take us through, you know, how they've helped and, 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 and you know, especially with information uh, for you to be able to relay all of this to the kids and be able to communicate easily. How has Project Last Mile helped? The, the learners were willing to learn because the other time they attended the session, they came back to me all excited. They wanted to tell me what was happening there. They were open up telling their parents they want to go to the clinic at any time they didn't mind. When it's the day to go to the clinic on the next day, usually that come to me day before teacher, I'm going to the clinic tomorrow, I won't be around. So yeah, they oh, open up. Okay. So they open up, it's, 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 it's a daily thing now, it's not a, it's not so taboo, it's not something they're scared to discuss or talk not about. Not anymore. Not anymore, that's fantastic. What are some of the stories that you've dealt with and you know, how have you been able to solve them? <clears throat> Mostly, Malkans is a very, it's not, it's not a, a good place for children. So most of my cases were either rape or exposition, whereby the whole family <coughs> lives in a one-room house. There's a mother, there's a father, everything happens there, they see. Our parents are willing to listen. When you talk to the children, ask them to bring their parents here, they do that, they listen, and yeah, there's a great improvement. Yeah, it has been hard, but yeah. Okay, so I've just spoken to teacher Zanella at St. Andrews Primary School and now I'm on my way to Luyengo Clinic to speak to, you know, one of the caregivers who's on the ground making a difference at the clinic, so I can't wait to talk to him. It's literally 10 minutes drive from Malkins. Prejudices, lack of understanding and embarrassment are some of the challenges these care workers are striving to overcome. I'm here at Luyengo Clinic to meet one of these coaches, Nurse Andreas Zwane, who is going to take me through these challenges. Hi, Coach Andreas Zwane. Now, I'm calling you Coach, you know, because you're part of the Girl Champ movement, but we'll get there. Um, firstly, you know, can you just take us through some of the challenges you face here at Luyengo Clinic? We are facing some challenges when it comes to adolescents. Yeah. Uh, adolescents, they don't come as we are expecting them to come for HIV testing. Um, and then in regards to Project Last Mile, um, tell us how, how have they been helpful? Actually, they have created a, a situation whereby uh, we are able now to take care of these people. Initially, uh, we were not friendly in terms of taking care of them. Yeah. yeah. I, okay, I remember uh, one child who was who came with an ailment, and unfortunately she came alone. Uh, then I, I had to call the uh, the parent to come, 
and we requested that the child can be tested mm -hmm. and uh, and we find that the child was HIV positive mm -hmm. and uh, when we, we, we How discussed, young was the child? The child was um, 17 years old. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and when, when we discussed with, with that child uh, we, we find that uh, she got the the, the HIV uh, utero. Yes, unfortunately, she, uh, the, the, the mother died and she was uh, with the guardian. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. So you helped her. Yeah, I, we helped. With yes. Counseling and, with counseling and medication. And, and medication. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay, so we're here at Luyengo Clinic. Um, Kavonina, just take us through the facilities, like a little young tour. Okay, Luyengo Clinic is one of the most, uh, is one of our busiest clinics, um, really, in the Manzini region. Um, where we are currently is where we do most of uh, our screening, mm -hmm. screening for HIV, um, so these TB. Two buildings. So most of these areas are. Uh, is where we do our counselling and our HIV and AIDS testing. Uh, a clinic like this one is the one that can then offer services um, that is specific to a certain extent, you know. But what is over and above them, they then refer to um, the hospital. So this one is like the mid-level kind of like um, public Clinic, um, just public to check health up. facility yeah. to do checkups, regular checkups, testing, counselling, antenatal checkups, refilling on on uh, prevention commodities okay. and things like that. Okay, so not like surgeries don't take place here. Like no, we okay. don't have surgeries in our clinics. Okay, and then here. This building here is where they do consultations, one-on-one -on -one consultations with the various clinic staff. This side is where you register for clinic services. Okay. Basically, even though um, the medication that you get is free of charge, you have to have five emalangeni for registering for our clinic services. So the people, that each is, patient has their files? That is where each patient signs up. Yeah. Um, they do not disclose. Um, the, they, they do not disclose what they are in the clinic for, it's just to sign up. They give them a card, a consultation card, so that they're able to then proceed um, to get the medical attention that they require. Hi, Rejoice. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Can you tell us what the infection rate is um, in terms of HIV and AIDS in Eswatini? HIV and AIDS is one of the public health uh, threats that we are responding to as a country. And we've done that since uh, 1986 when we first identified the first HIV case. And we've been responding as a country and we've seen the response improving with the years. And we've seen quite um, good results in terms of with the levels as we measure. Over the last five years, we've reduced the incidence of HIV by over 50 percent. Then when we look further into the figures, we see that we still have some problems with young people. The incidence levels in young people is still a bit high, above 2 percent, both males and females. Hence, we needed to re-strategize that how do we reach young people. And can you take us through on how you're combating this? How are you reaching out to, to the youngsters? So when we then uh, got the opportunity of Project Last Mile, and knowing that there is the partnership with Coca-Cola, we saw it as an opportunity because Coca-Cola is a well-marketed brand. You find it everywhere. So we thought if we were able to learn and pick on principles that are used to market Coca-Cola and attract uh, young people and anyone to buy Coca-Cola, we can transfer those principles to health for young people. How would you say Project Last Mile is helping you achieve that, um, you know, from a marketing point? The strategy had then to work out to say, how do we make the health facility a place to be, the in place, well, what can we do? Yes, a safe place. So that's what Girl Champ uh, program did to try and demystify what you get in facilities and work with the health workers so that they know that health workers are approachable 
health workers, when you get there, you will get information. So we did that in the three communities, and we think at, 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 when, when, we, when we activated those programs, we saw that now we have achieved to make, yes, it's a positive change. Nice. Here at CNBC Africa, we're all about giving you different viewpoints, and that's why we're on our way to go and talk to more healthcare givers, aka coaches. We're actually on our way to Zombotse La Velase Clinic, which is just 40 minutes outside of Bambane. I'm on my way to go and talk to Sister Gumede, and I can't wait to meet her. Hi, I'm Isabel Kamete, mm -hmm. a supervisor at La Velase Clinic. Project Last Mile, um, can you just take us through that and how they've also helped and how you've been working with them? Project Last Mile, I would say it was of great help. It, uh, it made the facility to be known to the youth. And the youth learned that we, as a facility, we are there for them. What are some of the cases that you have had to de deal with? I would say it's the gender-based violence, but mainly with their partners, mm -hmm. because they do have boyfriends and girlfriends. Yes. So they are now able to open up to the nurses to tell us what is happening to their lives. Mm -hmm. So we were able to counsel them and also refer them for further counseling. Now regarding Girl Champ, um, how have you seen that help you know within the community with that um, activation was it helpful the girls are now able to speak with us anywhere when we meet with them because they are now knowing that all oh, the nurses are there for us because of the project yeah. before they were scared yes. <laughs> they can speak anything they can say anything to them and they will get help. Because you guys are more approachable yes. and have become more of coaches, leading yeah. them through and guiding them through life yeah. instead of judging them. Oh, that's yeah. great. And we were not judging them even before. I think it was just a, a fear of the unknown. Yes. Like, ah, the nurses are old. As a woman like me, they will say, ah, this one is like my mother. So they'd be scared to come to me and say, oh, someone has done this and this to me. But now they are. They are coming to us. We're ending off our journey in Eswatini with one last location, which is a bit further out. We're heading to the Mafutseni Clinic, which is 90 minute drive from Baban. We've arrived at Mafutseni Clinic and we're going to be chatting to Sister in Charge Noma Khubi Mshongo, as well as Babu Dumisani Gininza, the clinic committee chairperson. Babu Dumisani, in terms of the girl champ uh, activation, you know, it's obviously for the youth. Um, have you seen an improvement since the activation? How is the relationship now with the nurses and the youth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge improvement? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they are more mature. Yes. So before the girl champ, the pregnancy rate was very low. 13. I mean, not low, but young. Young. So it was almost 13 and younger. Yes. So since the activation, at least the girls are from 18, 20 uh, upwards. Mm. Okay, so th that has improved a lot. So. Mm. They're more mature. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so you've seen that even the relationship with the nurses and the youth and the girls specifically has improved. So the girls are not scared mm -hmm. to come anymore. Yes. And it's more it's become a safe place for them to talk. 
Yes. Um, for instance, if they feel like they're pregnant, mm. they're not scared, and then they get the help that they need. Yeah. Oh. Can you just take us through some of the challenges that you face on a daily basis? Yes. Okay, one of the challenges is our uh, staff. We are short staff, mm -hmm. and our population is growing every now and then. So normally, before we had about four nurses who were available, then we were seeing about uh, a day, we were seeing about 80 people. Wow. But now we are only three nurses, and we are seeing more than 100 patients a day. Oh my goodness, yes. that is crazy. Yeah. So that is a lot of people to see amongst three people. Yes. Um, so that's definitely one of the challenges. Yes. And are there any other challenges? How is the medication? Yes, okay, even another challenge is the medication. We don't have enough medication. Okay, fine, we are supply with medication, but it normally lasts maybe for two weeks up to three weeks. They normally don't last for a month. Now, Sister Namathlobi, can you just tell us um, about Project Last Mile? How have they been helpful? Okay, like Project Last Mile was so very helpful because we were able to empower the, our girls because we have faced challenges with our girls in the community. They were not well empowered, like especially we were experiencing more pregnancy, like teenage pregnancy. I don't know if you mind sharing your story, for instance, you know, um, just as motivation to the young girls. Okay, in my experience, I was doing from four, I was 18 years old when I got pregnant. And unfortunately for me, my mother was not working. I don't have a father. My father died when I was two years. So my mother was trying by all means for me to, to go to school. But unfortunately, because of PF pressure, I became pregnant when doing from four. And fortunately enough for me, my mother was so supportive. She supported me throughout and I was able to finish school. So I even got, um, I delivered my baby on a Friday and Monday I went back to school. Wow. Yes. So your mom was there and yes. she took care of your child yes. while you finished school. Yes. And look at you now, sister, yes. helping other girls. <laughs> so there is definitely hope. Now, Kabonina, um, you know, the Project Last Mile is, is, is fairly new. Yeah. So uh, what potential do you see it going forward, you know, and um, can you just take us through some stats on how far it's come? We've had one activation so far in the three different um, clinics. And um, the feedback that we got was overwhelming. In total, uh, for all our three activations, we were able to get about 3,200 girls. Yeah? And um, about 50% of those girls we were able to even sign up into um, the, the computerized information systems, which is the health information system database, you know. Immediately after the activation, at least for the first three months, you know, the numbers for accessing services was quite high, yeah? yeah? And then it goes down, you know, which means that, you know what, we need to go back to the girls to say, remember, you are a girl champ. For a small country like Eswatini, I must say they are doing quite a lot in terms of reaching out to the communities. It was just great to see just how much these young girls' lives have changed. I mean, to start off with a statistic, a pregnancy statistic as young as 13 to now 18 to 20, it shows just how much this initiative has impacted their lives. I've come to the end of my trip here at Swadini and it's clear to see that Project Last Mile and Goldchamp are making a difference within their community's lives. So from me at Santa Marco, I'll see you next time. With specific thanks to the Global Fund, the Coca-Cola Foundation and the Coca-Cola Company for initiating Project Last Mile in the Kingdom of Eswatini.